Well, I wasn't positive the day would come, but Jessica Simpson, the trans activist formerly known as Jonathan Yaniv, has finally received a criminal record after being found guilty not once, not twice, but three times of a criminal offense. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News. And if you followed my reports on Rebel News, you know I've updated you many times on the never ending saga that is Jessica Simpson, formerly Jonathan Yaniv. You might know this person by many different names and ways. You might even know this person as the wax my balls guy, because when immigrant women were trying to be beauticians to help support their family, Yaniv had a tendency of suing them when they were surprised by Yaniv's male genitalia and were not comfortable proceeding with waxing them. You might also See Yaniv or Simpson as a familiar face here as the individual whacking my colleague David Menzies with a cane and then also assaulting my former colleague Kian Bextie now with the counter signal while he was reporting for Rebel News about a weapons charge that Yaniv was facing right out front of the courthouse. Take a look. Are you pleading go? guilty? Go, 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 what? Go. No, go. don't touch me. Don't touch go. me. Go. Hey! hey. hey. Stop! Go away from me! Go! Go away! My last report about Yaniv Simpson updated you that yes, Yaniv actually was found guilty for assaulting Key and Bexty, but for the second time in a row received a conditional discharge that would allow Yaniv to continue on with life as though. Yaniv wasn't really a criminal, but that time has come and gone due to an incident where Yaniv uttered threats at activist billboard Chris Elston. Now, you can catch up on this saga in its entirety so far by going to yanivtrial.com. That's also where you can donate to support our many legal fees or costs to continue to report on this individual, because not only are we actually supporting the lawsuits for both Kian as well as Dave Menzies for the attacks that you saw here, but Yaniv, who is a serial litigator, also brought on a lawsuit against us at Rebel News, which we incurred costs to defend ourselves from, and for which I have an important update coming up next about very soon. All right, here we have it. I'm out in the Mary Times doing reporting here. I wasn't able to be here to see a moment in history where Yaniv actually received a criminal record for something. Joining me is Carrie Simpson from the Canadian Voters Association and the victim in this situation, sorry to call you that, and that is Billboard Chris Elston. Thanks for being on Rebel News. Always nice to be with Rebel News, Drea. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you so much, Drea. Pleasure to be here. Now, Chris, I'm going to start with you. Uh, tell us the first half of how court went. Well, Jessica Yaniv's lawyer was pushing hard for yet another conditional discharge, which would mean no criminal record for Mr. Yaniv. And Jessica Yaniv's lawyer at one point was lying to the court about me. And so I spoke up out of turn and I was chastised by the Crown Prosecutor. And then later Yaniv was lying as well. So I wasn't just going to sit there while the Crown Prosecutor did nothing, so I spoke up again, and they almost threatened to kick me out of the court. But I think it all worked out in the end, because we got what we wanted, which was a suspended sentence for Yaniv. I would have preferred jail time, but at least this means he now has a criminal record. Carrie, I'm going to jump to you on this, because you've been like a legal advocate. You've been working closely with Chris during all this. So the, they were pushing again for a third conditional discharge. Uh, what do you think of that? So I think that we're making progress. And, and what people don't understand is the length of, of criminal uh, conduct that this individual has engaged in. And there's still new cases coming. He's, again, been recently charged now with criminal defamation. So there'll be still yet another criminal court proceeding. But when you look at what's happened here, the fact that there would even be discussion around a conditional discharge is mind boggling to me. And fortunately, fortunately, we had a very good judge who could sort of see through the, the, the trans card plays that were being made there, you know, the victim syndrome, oh, poor me. I mean, Yanev always comes up with this, these sad stories. 
Um, this judge wasn't buying it. And uh, he, you know, applied the law. He, he recognized that the legal test for a conditional discharge is it not only has to be in the interest of the perpetrator, you know, even this case, but it also has to be in the public interest. And in his findings, Judge uh, Brecknell said, well, you know, a conditional discharge may be in Yaniv's interest. It's certainly not in the public interest. And what was interesting about this case, so he got the, the suspended sentence. Now, you know, we're all a little bit nervous about when the day comes when a jail sentence is actually imposed, because on that day, we're going to have to deal with the issue of, of which jail do we put Yaniv in, a, a man's prison or a f women's prison. And we know that he has a history of abuse to women and uh, sexual issues that uh, probably are not conducive to a safe environment for other female inmates if he does get put in a women's prison. But the judge also spent quite a bit of time, and, and I appreciated this, and, and I think Chris did as well, was on the issues of free speech. And I, and I know this is near and dear to Chris's heart because this is what he does as Billboard Chris. So I'm going to let him talk about what, what the judge said. It, it was really significant. Yeah, I think particularly considering what Canada has been through this past two years with our charter rights being infringed upon, it was very encouraging to see the judge specifically cite the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and he specifically mentioned uh, two clauses from our fundamental freedoms, which are everyone has the following fundamental freedoms, freedom of conscience and religion, and freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression. And he said that it doesn't matter if my speech is offensive to some, I still have every right to say it. And there were various ways that Jessica Yaniv could have expressed his disagreements to me, which didn't involve threatening to shoot me. So he felt it was in the public interest, given that Yaniv had already had conditional discharges, which as part of those, Yaniv was under a condition to be of good behavior. Mm -hmm. And while he was under these previous conditional discharges, he was not of good behavior. He had assaulted Kian Bexty, and then he threatened me. So the judge saw right through their nonsense that they were trying to sell. The, the other important aspect I think of this is that this judge was very, very, very clear on relating his, his statements about the right of Chris to, to engage in his form of expression uh, in consideration of what is transpiring, not only in Canada, but in the U.S. right now, which tells me that there's a heightened awareness right now within the judiciary that something needs to be done. Uh, council culture, shutting one group out just because you don't like what they, they had to say. Um, you know, you could read between the lines, this judge is very concerned where we are going as a nation, as a country. So while we all look at this case as pivotal in, in the Yaniv, um, ongoing saga, which is no, doesn't look like it's going to be shutting down anytime soon. Um, but for this judge to take advantage of this um, opportunity to make these statements was was very significant. So I, I think just kudos to Chris again for not only um, engaging in a civil right, that, you know, a constitutional right we have here in Canada, but fighting to protect that and presenting his case in a way, <clears throat> thank God for technology and the video cameras and all the rest of it, because uh, this equipped the court to come down with a very, very good decision for not only British Columbia, but Canadians at large. Well, I'm sorry I missed it. Sounds like a courtroom not affected by wokeism. I'm glad you guys were there and glad you're on Rebel News to tell us what happened. I'm sure I will see you very soon, both of you. Thanks for being on Rebel News. Thanks, Drea. Thanks so much, Drea. If you want to help support our journalism so that we can defend ourselves against the serial litigator and repeat offender, Yaniv, and also let the world know that you can't assault Rebel News journalists for bringing people the other side of the story, please donate what you can at yanivtrial.com.